This is a map of bike path density in Europe. All the purple lines are bike paths. And if you divert your attention to the left part of this map, you'll see a coastal country with a lot of purple lines. This is the Netherlands, a densely populated country that knows a thing or two about designing brilliant infrastructure. And the bike paths play a significant role in that. See, with a population of 17.4 million people and a land mass of approximately 41.5 thousand square kilometers. The Netherlands is smaller in size yet more densely populated than most European countries. So in order to navigate that, they've come up with effective and interesting ways to handle population movement. The Netherlands is globally recognized for its outstanding cycling infrastructure, which plays a central role in daily life and national mobility. With over 32,000 kilometers of dedicated bike lanes, the country has built an environment where cycling is not just a recreational activity, but a primary mode of transportation. These lanes are thoughtfully designed, often fully separated from car traffic and clearly marked with red asphalt to ensure cyclist safety and visibility. The result is an incredibly bike-friendly nation where commuting by bicycle is efficient, comfortable, and safe. With a population of 17.4 million and over 23 million bicycles, the Netherlands boasts 1.3 bikes per capita, more than any other country in the world. This dense network supports not only urban travel, but also connects suburbs and rural areas, reducing car dependency and promoting a healthier, more sustainable lifestyle. The success of this system stems from consistent investment, smart planning, and a culture that prioritizes people over vehicles. One of the most impressive aspects of Dutch infrastructure is the seamless integration between cycling and public transportation. In cities like Amsterdam, the system is designed to make multimodal travel easy and efficient. Commuters often begin their journey by bike, riding to nearby transit hubs where massive bike parking garages, some holding thousands of bicycles, are readily available. These facilities are strategically placed near train, tram, and bus stations, allowing for smooth transitions between transport modes. Once parked, travelers can continue their journey using public transit to reach their destination. This flexibility reduces the need for cars and significantly cuts down traffic congestion. In many cases, especially within cities, people opt to complete their entire trip by bike due to the convenience and infrastructure in place. By supporting both cycling and mass transit in tandem, the Netherlands has created a transportation ecosystem that is efficient, sustainable, and centered around user convenience. Utrecht, one of the Netherlands' most bike-friendly cities, is home to the world's largest bicycle parking facility, a testament to the country's commitment to sustainable urban mobility. Located beneath Utrecht Central Station, this multi-level structure accommodates over 12,500 bicycles and offers 24-7 camera surveillance for added security. The facility is not just massive, it's also highly efficient. Cyclists can ride directly into the garage on a smooth, continuous path, guided by digital signage that indicates available parking spots. The first 24 hours of parking are free, encouraging frequent use by daily commuters. The design incorporates natural light through large windows and an open layout, creating a pleasant and safe atmosphere. Additional features include bike rental options and repair services. This garage exemplifies how infrastructure can be both functional and forward-thinking, serving thousands of users daily while reducing car dependency and promoting healthier, greener travel in the heart of the city. In the decades following World War II, many Dutch cities, including Rotterdam, were rebuilt with car-centric designs, mirroring trends in North America. Wide roads, vast parking lots, and sprawling suburbs prioritized automobiles over pedestrians and cyclists. However, by the 1970s, this approach began to face serious public backlash. 
rising road fatalities, declining cycling culture, and the deterioration of livable urban spaces led to widespread protests and citizen activism. The Dutch government responded by shifting priorities toward people-centered urban planning. Investments were made to redesign streets, reduce speed limits, and create separate, safe bike lanes. Public transportation systems were expanded and integrated with cycling infrastructure. As a result, cycling and walking once again became dominant modes of transport. Rotterdam, once a symbol of car dependency, transformed into a city that balances modern infrastructure with human-scale design. This shift shows that meaningful urban reform is possible when governments respond to the needs and voices of their citizens. Dutch suburban design reflects the same values seen in the country's urban centers, efficiency, accessibility, and community. Unlike typical American suburbs, which are often dominated by wide roads and large, isolated homes built for car access, Dutch suburbs prioritize compact living and shared public spaces. Homes are smaller by design, which allows more land to be dedicated to parks, bike paths, pedestrian walkways, and communal areas. Streets are narrower, and traffic is often limited or calmed, making neighborhoods safer and more walkable. Dedicated cycling and walking paths are usually separated from vehicle roads by green buffers, enhancing safety and comfort. This model not only reduces reliance on cars, but also fosters stronger community connections and more sustainable lifestyles. By valuing shared amenities over private space, Dutch suburbs demonstrate how intelligent planning can enhance both quality of life and environmental efficiency, even outside densely populated urban cores. The Netherlands' geography makes it especially vulnerable to flooding, with much of its land lying below sea level. After a catastrophic storm in 1953 that flooded over 150,000 hectares and claimed around 2,000 lives, the country launched one of the most ambitious engineering projects in history, the Delta Works. This vast system consists of 13 dams, sluices, locks, dikes, and storm surge barriers, all strategically designed to protect the low-lying regions from the sea. By shortening the coastline by over 700 kilometers, the Delta Works reduced the number of vulnerable points and eliminated the need for constant maintenance of countless smaller levees. The project not only prevents flooding, but also demonstrates the Dutch approach to long-term preventative infrastructure. Instead of reacting to disaster, they invested in robust, future-proof solutions. Today, the Delta Works is considered a marvel of civil engineering and a global model for climate resilience. Much of the Netherlands exists thanks to a centuries-old tradition of land reclamation. Faced with a low-lying, flood-prone landscape, the Dutch pioneered the use of windmills to pump water out of marshes, lakes, and even parts of the sea. By building dikes to enclose targeted areas and then draining them, they created vast tracts of usable land known as polders. These reclaimed lands are flat, nutrient-rich, and ideal for agriculture. One of the most iconic outcomes of this engineering feat is the Netherlands' thriving tulip industry. The unique soil conditions of the polders have made the country the world's leading producer of tulips, accounting for roughly 80% of global exports. What began as a necessity to survive in a hostile environment evolved into a symbol of Dutch ingenuity and cultural identity. Today, tulip fields are not only an economic asset, but a globally recognized image of the Netherlands. The Port of Rotterdam stands as one of the most critical pillars of the Dutch economy and a prime example of strategic infrastructure planning. As Europe's largest and most efficient seaport, it plays a central role in global trade, handling massive volumes of cargo every day. Located at the delta of the Rhine and Meuse rivers, its position provides direct access to the North Sea making it an ideal gateway for goods entering and leaving Europe. 
the port spans an area larger than Manhattan and is equipped with cutting-edge logistics systems, ensuring fast and reliable handling of shipments. Rotterdam's port activities contribute significantly to the Netherlands' economic strength, with exports accounting for 82.5% of the country's GDP. Beyond shipping, the port supports a wide range of industries, including petrochemicals, logistics, and manufacturing, solidifying the Netherlands' reputation as a global trade and transportation hub. Amsterdam Schiphol Airport is a model of efficient air travel infrastructure, handling between 68 to 80 million passengers annually, despite its relatively compact size. What sets Schiphol apart is its highly strategic design. With six runways positioned to accommodate changing wind conditions and a single terminal layout, the airport minimizes walking distances and streamlines passenger flow. This smart layout allows for quicker transfers, fewer delays, and a more convenient travel experience. Shiphole also excels in multimodal connectivity. Beneath the terminal lies a major rail hub where high-speed trains connect passengers to Amsterdam city center in just 15 minutes, or to destinations across the Netherlands and Europe. Frequent express buses also serve the airport, offering further options for travelers. Remarkably, the entire airport sits four meters below sea level on reclaimed land, another testament to Dutch engineering. Shiphole's seamless integration of air and ground transport makes it one of Europe's most efficient airports. While the Netherlands' infrastructure may seem unique or even unattainable to other nations, the video argues that its success is not the result of geography or luck, but of intentional, people-centered planning. The Dutch approach is rooted in long-term thinking, public engagement, and political will, all of which can be replicated elsewhere. Cities around the world have the potential to adopt similar models if governments prioritize sustainability, safety, and livability over short-term convenience. The transformation of Rotterdam, from a car-centric post-war city to a hub of cycling and public transit, is proof that change is possible with public pressure and responsive leadership. Whether it's integrated transport systems, flood defense, or compact suburban design, the key lies in aligning infrastructure with the needs of communities and the environment. The Dutch model demonstrates that with collaboration, smart investment, and future-focused planning, any country can build cities that work better for both people and planet.